Sometimes the best way to success is to take your losses early to increase your gains in the future. And this is what the Pelicans are doing with Zion Williamson. Now, many NBA fans are wondering why the hell aren't the Pelicans playing Zion more in the NBA restart? Aren't the Pelicans trying to win games? Do they care? Do they want Zion to succeed? And that's just it. The New Orleans Pelicans do want Zion to succeed. Long term. Because they know that Zion is a very unusual athlete with a very unusual body that they are trying to fix so he can sustain a long-term career. And here's how. Now, I don't want this to be about Alvin Gentry's game management skills because that's a broken record I don't feel like playing again. But for the moment, let me defend Zion's health for what exactly is wrong with him. About a year ago, I watched a YouTube channel from a MD named Brian Suterer. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. And I'll leave a link below. When Zion was young, he grew too quickly, but at the same time, didn't grow fast enough. When Zion was a freshman in high school, he was listed at 6 foot 3, 175 pounds. His senior year of high school, he was 275 pounds and six foot seven. So here's the problem. He gained 100 pounds in four years, but he only grew four inches in four years. On average, boys stop growing around 16 to 17 years old. That's about as tall as you're gonna get. But their muscles continue to develop into their early 20s. Well, the problem with Zion is that his muscles developed quicker than normal, but his tendons and his joints didn't catch up supporting those muscles. The video showed examples of Zion walking and that his knees basically bend inward when he walks or collapse in on him and he sways side to side and waddles like a duck because of hip issues. So basically his tendons and his knees and his hips and his connective tissue hasn't really caught up with the rest of his body. He's a ticking time bomb of a torn meniscus or a ACL tear just waiting to happen. Now about a year ago, I myself was in physical therapy and I gave this theory to my physical therapist on what's wrong with Zion and he pretty much agreed. And I guarantee you the Pelicans medical staff knows this too. They're trying to strengthen Zion's tendons and connective tissue. Now how long will that take? Well, Zion just turned 20 years old. So, hell, for all we know, he may grow another two inches, which might actually benefit him in the long run. Okay, but Zion looked totally out of shape. Now, this is mostly a subjective opinion because I've heard too many NBA analysts and former players who watched him and say, he doesn't look out of shape. So, I'll put that aside for the minute. But there's still medical proof that, in fact, it's nothing to do with him being out of shape. A doctor went on Twitter and explained why this is the case. Now, I'm not going to try to pronounce this doctor's name, but I will put his name up there for all of you to see. And here's what he had to say. It's not that he, Zion, lost his conditioning. Rather, he lost the time to ramp up into game intensity appropriately. With those kinds of jumps comes a much higher soft tissue injury risk. Thus, Pell staff is playing him in short bursts right now. And somebody responded, He played more than that coming off of an injury, though. What changed? The difference is he missed critical ramp-up time while he was gone from the bubble. When coming back from injury, they worked very gradually to that point. If you skip steps during that process, your injury risk goes way up. So again, we see it's all about his tendons, not about his conditioning or his strength or his age. The popular thing to do right now is to say, well, he's 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, I would play basketball at the YMCA with my buddies for four straight hours. Really? You're going to use the false equivalency of you at 15, 20 years old playing rec basketball at the YMCA with your friends. So some of the most reasonable and respected sports media people are using this excuse. 
which is asinine. And look, in their defense, I get that reaction. And I do. You've been cooped up inside your house for five straight months with no sports to watch, and now you finally get a chance to watch sports, but the second it happens, it's a half-assed product from what you were promised. I felt that same thing too. Why doesn't he just play? Why are they being a helicopter parent? But that frustration is not an excuse for you to ignore the facts and come up with your own logic on why you're right and NBA medical experts that work for a billion dollar franchise are wrong. Because even though it's cliche, sometimes slow and steady wins the race.